Welcome to the 3D tutorial of SMODE, where we are going to introduce the 3D system used in SMODE. If you haven't seen the second tutorial where we explain 2D compositing in SMODE, I suggest you take a look at it before we get started. So I'm going to create a new composition, and this time I will create a camera. So now we have a camera, and I will generate a primitive. To generate a primitive, either I click in the element window and choose a primitive, in this case a sphere or otherwise I use control space in the search bar and search for the type of geometry I would like to use, in this case a box. The last way is to import a 3D object, but we will look at this later on in the tutorial. So a 3D layer in SMODE works like a 2D layer, which means it is composed of a generator, in this case a box, a chain of modifiers, by default there are none, and a renderer, in this case a surface renderer. The generator here contains all the information of the 3D primitive that we have generated. For example, its size and its level of subdivisions and its UV mode, meaning the application of an image or texture on the object in a folded out form. After this, there will be a group of modifiers that we can see here if I right-click on the primitive. Here I can access all these modifiers found in SMODE by category, which allows us to transform the 3D object. So what is a 3D object? Like in any other program, a 3D object is a group of points, otherwise known as vertexes, in space, which are connected by lines that form surfaces. In this graphic, you can clearly see what we call the points, lines, and surfaces. In SMODE we can generate three types of objects. For example, objects that only display their vertexes, such as point clouds or particle systems, objects that generate lines and points, these are called splines, and lastly an object that shows all three, points, lines, and surfaces, as we did when we generated a primitive earlier on. So my default box comes with the surface renderer, but I can also display it in other ways, for example with lines, using wireframe lines, or with points, using sprite points. So in each of these renderers, we can see various elements in particular on the sprite points. Here we have different images that we can use and change as we see fit, but for this first tutorial, I'm going to concentrate on the surface renderer and how to show textures in the surface renderer. So when I generate a 3D object in SMODE, we can see by default that it comes with the surface renderer. And if I open it up, I can see it comes with two components, one called diffuse and the other one specular. All the components allow us to display textures and make them react to light in different ways. For the moment I'm going to concentrate on the diffuse component. If I open it, I can see there's a uniform map inside. It's white, so if I change the color, it changes the color of the object. If we change the map to checkerboard, you can see what has happened. A checkerboard that has applied itself to the box. I can change this by turning the texture into its own composition. Just click on the map and press Ctrl Shift C, or here choose Compo. And now you can see we have a composition which we can isolate with the green arrow, which is applied to our object. So I'm going to add some video to this map on top of the checkerboard, and I'm going to play it back here with the standalone player. If you haven't already watched the second tutorial which covers 2D compositing, I invite you to do so. Starting from the moment that we have this composition applied to the surface renderer, we can apply all the modifications that we like in the 2D composition. So now we can see that the composition we have here is being repeated on all sides of the box. There are a few ways in which I can fix this. I can select the generator and change its UV mode, which will change the way I choose to show my image on the box. And I can also access the modifiers if I right click on the box. Under attributes, UV mapping, to change the display of an image on an object, but I won't show this in depth in this tutorial. We'll take a closer look at this in another tutorial.
Before creating a light, if I turn around my object, we can see that certain surfaces are lit and others not. This is due to a default lighting rig in Smode. But the moment I create a light, we can see that the only light in the scene is my point light and that the default lighting rig in Smode no longer exists. Before going further with the lighting, I would just like to show you something on the surface renderer. If I select the surface renderer and I put its auto illuminate at 100%, I can tell my object to ignore the lighting in the scene. In this surface renderer, we also have other useful elements such as the ability to show the surfaces only in the back of the object or on either side. By default, you should leave this in front because if you choose both, Smode will calculate each surface twice. But if you import FBX files with normals facing in opposite directions, then it can be used. For the moment, I'm going to leave my auto illumination at 0%. So to select this light, I have to go into 3D mode up here. And like this, I'll be able to displace my point light that I created here. If I move my point like this, you'll be able to see that we have a bright point on the surface of the box. This is a specular. The specular is created by a material in the surface renderer and it is displayed with a certain color that can be chosen in the specular tab. I'm going to leave this white and up here we are going to change the specular map, which is uniform for the moment. I'm going to change it to noise and I'm going to bring down the scale of my noise. Now you can see that the specular is driven by this noise map. I'm also going to add a directional light. So there you go. Light's coming from the other side. Mm, change the diffuse color to a pale blue just to show you. And there we have it. So all the components of the surface renderer are accessible by right clicking here and choosing components. Here you can see all the components available in the surface renderer. I'm going to concentrate on the environment map and the height bump, which both allow us to display false reflections and bumps on the object without subdividing its geometry. So I'm going to create an environment map called Palaisois. And here you can see that this has generated some false reflections on my object. This reflection is driven by this map here. I can also use a bump map to modify the surface of the object with a texture. To do this, I right click again on the surface renderer, choose components, height bump, and choose noise bump. And here we can see that some noise has appeared on the object, but this has not affected my environment map. As we saw with the 2D modifiers, the order of the elements in the tree here affect their relationship to one another meaning that the tree reads its elements from top to bottom. So here what is happening is that Smode is first of all calculating the environment map and then the noise. What I want is for the noise to be calculated before the map so that it's having an effect on the environment map. And here you can see that my reflections have been taken into account by the map that I used in my noise bump. In the tree, you can also see that each of these components has an intensity parameter and a diffusion mode, which allow us to adjust them as we did in the 2D compositing tutorial. For example, if I put it in additive mode, then the component will multiply on additive with all the layers that are behind it. So as you can see, there is only one camera in my scene. I can create more cameras. To do so, right click in the element window, go to camera and create a camera. This one I'm going to call C1 and this one C2. And now what is happening is that seeing as I have two cameras, I'll be able to choose one or the other to display my scene. 
To do this, I just have to click on my camera and choose set as current camera V01. And V01 is this composition here. Then I can change between my first and second cameras. To change the camera, you can also do this in the composition where the cameras are found. Here, this is the root composition. And down here, you can see the current camera where I have a choice of both cameras. For the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to use 3D View, and now I'm going to import an FBX, which is already in the example pack and is called Wheat Group. To do this, I'm going to use the search bar, which you have down here underneath the media directory. This way, I'll find the right element. So it's this one here, Wheat Group. So when I drag and drop, I'll be given a choice between two things. First, import as 3D Group which will help if we want to import a lot of objects that we will animate or modify separately in Smode. You can look at the documentation in Import FBX to see what all these options do. For the moment, I won't go into that though because I only have one object. I'm going to import it as a reference and this way I will have my object imported as a whole. So here it has imported the object in the middle of my box, indicated by this little icon which has appeared. And here you have the wheat object. So to texturize this element, we will use the same method as we did on the box. As before, it comes with a surface renderer. Inside, this is a diffuse. I won't put a texture on for the moment, I'm just going to adapt it a bit using the color of the checkerboard underneath. So of course, to texture a 3D object, the texture must be unfolded initially. In Smode, you have access to some elements available to unfold UVs. If you type UV into the search bar up here, you have access to these three different modifiers which allow you to change the UVs. Now that I have my 3D scene prepared, I'll be able to add post effects in 2D. So what are post effects? These are simply 2D modifiers that I'm going to add to the original composition, which contains all the 3D elements. To do this, I either right click on the root composition or at the bottom of the tree, I'm going to add a modifier called anti-aliasing. This will allow me to smooth out these pixels around the edges of the 3D object. I'm also going to add a bloom effect. To do this, I'm going to add a blur modifier. While holding Control shift click I can slightly bring down the intensity of my blur and augment its source level to 100%. That way, I get this lighting effect. I can change this after by bringing down the intensity of the blur. To finish this tutorial, I'm going to quickly show you the 3D modifiers which I haven't gone over. This is going to help us with the following tutorial, which will be all about the 3D modifiers. So I'm going to start with a few modifications to my scene. What I want to do is undulate this surface with a modifier. To do this, I'm going to use a displacement modifier. To have access to the 3D modifiers, I right click on the 3D object, in this case the box, and I choose a distort modifier, in this case the displace, which will modify my box like this. At 100% intensity, it appears like this, and at 0% intensity, like this. I don't want my effect to displace the box as strong as this, so I'm going to bring it down a bit. Okay, that's great. And now I'm going to mask this effect, meaning I'm going to modulate its intensity as we did in the 2D tutorial. So right click on the displace modifier, go to masks, 3D noise, and I'm going to bring down its size a bit in the X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to read it. And here we can see what is happening. So if you want to see a bit better what is happening, I can change the subdivision of my box. And here we can see a lot better what the 3D noise is doing to my object. And to finish, I'm going to use basically the same technique to animate the wheat. For this, I'm going to use another modifier called 3D Transform, which is the equivalent of 2D Transform. And to modify its intensity, I will use a 3D noise mask again. 
that I'm going to play and bring down a bit in scale. And now I have my animated wheat. So that's the end of the introduction to 3D in SMODE. The next will focus on 3D modifiers and how to do procedural animations in SMODE. I hope this tutorial was useful. So thanks for watching this tutorial and we'll see you next time.